everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. And today I'm sharing with you a mixed media altered tag that I made using the prompts from the Tag It Tuesday Facebook group. I usually do one of these every month. I like to make altered tags. A lot of people ask me, what do you do with those? Uh, mostly I give them away. Either I send them to people who have donated to my channel or uh, supported me in some other way. Um, in an envelope. They work really great as something to send in a business size long skinny envelope. Uh, I write something on the back and send it along as a little piece of art that you can hang up on your refrigerator or bulletin board or something. Or I sometimes will put them in library books in the library. I'm not really sure how they feel about that but if somebody you know takes that book out and then they just find it. It's like little found art and I put a little a little poem on the back about found art and um, you can just of course donate them to the library as bookmarks or whatever. It has to be ones that are flat though. Sometimes I put more dimensional elements on them that really don't work well for a bookmark. So that's what I do with them. So for Tag It Tuesday there's four prompts and you just use at least two of the prompts. Usually I use all four. This time I only used three. Uh, usually I just put them all on there, but um, there was one I just, I didn't fit and I didn't feel like doing it. So I'm starting out by making a background on my tag. These are manila shipping tags. You can buy them in an office store. Sometimes they come with strings or wires in the holes and they come in different sizes and I had a box that started out with a thousand of them because I knew I would be doing a lot of them and uh, it was more economical to buy it that way. I, I don't think anybody needs a thousand of them probably besides me, but um, yeah, that's what I have. So I've probably went through about half of them maybe. I don't know. I've give, I give some away uh, in, in Happy Mailboxes and stuff too, so I'm not really sure. I'm not going to go count them and find out. So I used some different... Uh, papers from my stash to start out with that were in blue, different tones of blue. And then I also added a little bit of light blue washi tape as well and made kind of like a collage background. I wanted to integrate it a little bit. So I used some light blue and some white uh, acrylic paint on a brayer to just kind of, I don't know, it was looking like there was a lot of lines. I also wanted to add a little bit of sparkle and shine because it's the holiday season and also over in uh, our group Art Joy of Sharing on Facebook as well. Our hashtag this month was about uh, adding bling to stuff. So this, this Mod Podge has small bits of glitter in it and I just put put a ceiling coat over the whole thing. I was trying to show it. You can see it better on the black, but it's got uh, glitter, just like a bunch of sparkles all over the whole thing, and it's all sealed in. You know, sometimes washi tape pulls up, and so I wanted to make sure that the washi tape was sealed as well. So then for the first prompt, it was uh, use something from another hobby, and I mean, I tried to think of something that Really, one of the only other real major hobby I had was rubber stamping. And I still use that in with my mixed media. But uh, there's the whole the whole discussion. In fact, I think um, Lindsay from uh, Frugal Crafter was having a discussion this week about on her channel about why stamp if you can draw. And I wonder that too, <laughs> because I can draw. But I do have a lot of stamps and I should get them out more. These stamps were sent to me by a viewer and I really, I, th I thought my, my background, my blue sparkly kind of wintry background needed to have a cardinal because if I ever see cardinals, the only time I see them is in the winter. So, and really not very often. So I decided to stamp one on some red paper and cut it out. But then I wanted one that would face in the opposite direction as well. And the thing about a stamp is that it stamps the same thing over and over and over. So you can't stamp it in the opposite direction, but you can. <laughs> and so 
All I did was to get out a gel plate, and you could also just do this with a sheet of rubber. I used to do it uh, years ago with a sheet of, of rubber, just flat, but the gel plate works great for this. And you use acrylic paint, and so I applied the acrylic paint to the stamp using a sponge pouncer. Now you will get a fatter line. It's not as a, it's not fine. Although if you re really have a light touch, you can get good at this and you can get on the gel plate, you can get a finer line, but mine was fat. And so I put it on the gel plate so that the black paint is now, the outline of the bird is now on the gel plate. Then I used some, some uh, colored paper and I press down, and now when I lift it up off the gel plate, I have the image in the reverse direction. So because it was, the lines were so thick, I decided to go ahead and stamp the bird again on another piece of colored paper using the acrylic paint, which gives me kind of the same look. The original one that I stamped with the archival ink, it had thinner lines, more fine lines, and I wanted them to look similar. One of them would look a lot different than the other. So I went ahead and stamped it again, cut it out, cut both of them out, and now I have a pair of cardinal birds that are facing in the opposite direction. So that's a little trick for you in case you wanted to ever have things that were facing in the opposite direction. <laughs> and that's how it works. Uh, one little thing to say about it is that you do need to uh, clean up the stamp acrylic paint is plasticky rubberized stuff right and so is the stamp so you don't want to leave that paint to dry on the stamp you when you ink maybe you don't care so much because it's not going to dry and make it globby but uh, with acrylic paint you do want to get that stuff off so I had a wet uh, baby wipe and I just wiped it all down to make it clean again and got all that acrylic paint off there so I had some little die cut branches from another viewer who sent them to me in Happy Mail and I put some of those on and then I glued down my little birds and I think they're cute. They, they're, you know, kind of facing each other on different branches, but if the, if the birds had been going in the same direction, it just would have looked stupid. <laughs> I just, I really needed to have one in the opposite. So then I'm just kind of started out adding a little bit of detail with the white pen to start out with. And then I'm using different, uh, well, these are my Stabilo Woody's crayons. It happened to be what was on the desk, but I probably should have used something a little bit finer. Some of my other crayonish products, which I have many. <laughs> and I'm adding in a little bit of shading and some more color blending that with my water brush. Remember Stabilo is highly water reactive so you can really blend out these Stabilo woodies if you want to get them real smooth with water with a, either a water brush like I used or just some water on a brush or even your finger in some cases you can just dip your finger in water and, and um, smooth them out that way. Then I wanted to uh, add a few more little detail lines and uh, in some cases maybe fix a line that I went over. The Stabilo Woodies have such a thick uh, end that I maybe went over a few of my black lines too much. So I got out my Pentel pocket brush. This one has a little brush, detail brush on the end of it with India ink in it. And I just kind of touched up and, and also I added a few darker lines to my branches. So then there was another prompt on here that said to add pearls. I looked for my flat back pearls. I couldn't find them. I have, I had this catastrophe of all this container that I had with all the little things like stick on gin, stick on pearls, uh, sequins, all that type of stuff spilled. And I just scooped it all back up and put it back in the box. But I need to go through and sort it all out. And I haven't done that. That's going to be a project, let me tell you. And so I just couldn't find them. And I was annoyed. So I, I thought about uh, pearl um, embossing powder. And I thought I could make like some snowflake looking drops of pearly snow in the background of my winter scene by using some of that 
pearl embossing powder. So I grabbed that and then I used some glossy accents, which is almost kind of a, an acrylic glaze. I mean, it is acrylic glaze, but it has a little fine tip. And, uh, and when, you, when you put acrylic on and then you heat it with a heat tool, it puffs up. If you heat it a lot, it puffs up. And when I put the glossy accents on and then I put, because um, it's still wet, right? And then I put the embossing powder all over and then I heated it. Those little things did come up. Those little dots came up like little pearls. So I added pearls, even though maybe it's not the conventional way that you would think about it. That's what I like to do. I like to challenge myself. In Art Joy of Sharing, we have a pick a stick challenge, which is just a one word prompt. And you can interpret that any way you want. This is my interpretation of adding pearls. So I did pull them up to the camera and try to show you. Another one of the prompts was to add a flower. And at first I thought I was going to add a poinsettia flower. So I cut out some, some poinsettia looking leaf petal things and they were too big. And so I decided to just use a punch since I was getting out all my old stuff like stamps and things like that. I would get out a paper punch. Uh, this one is from Stampin' Up! And it cuts three different flowers and I used uh, I think three different pieces of painty paper and just punched out two of the designs of flowers. The other other design had, it's almost like a sunburst. It has a lot of little petals and I didn't think it looked as good. So I just used the two, the one that has five petals and the one that has a lot of little bumpy petals. And I put some flowers on all over the place. I guess this is a type of plant that loses its leaves but keeps its flowers. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I see bear bear trees that have just like the be the berries or something. But anyway, I added the flowers. I'm not sure they go with the scene so much, but they do add an additional color, which is kind of a yellow orange, which was also in the bird a little bit, and that brings that type of a color to the rest of the tag so I was okay with it. I went around the petals with the black uh, pocket brush pin because things, uh, some things being outlined in black and other things not just kind of bothers me so I, I just added, uh, added some black and then some white Posca pin. And then I decided to add a little bit of shading by scribbling a dark blue uh, Stabilo Woody down and um, picking it up off my scratch paper with a water brush and adding in the shading. And of course, I'm going to back this with blue paper and add some fibers to the top. I also added a little bit of Stickles glitter glue here and there to add another big bit of sparkle because of sparkle, you know, for just for November. And this will be my logic last project for November and we're off to December. So yeah, I added a little word. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can leave me a comment or question. I try to answer within 24 hours. And also you can subscribe. We're really close to the next level of, you know, the next big number would be great to get it by the end of the year. So please subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, you can share this if you want to on Pinterest or something like that. All those things help me out because it helps get the word out there that I'm making content that people might enjoy and lets YouTube recommend my videos to other people more frequently. So that's it for me today for Tag It Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.